Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel and for today's video it's another a day in a life working in IT so I'm gonna take you today with me at work and show you how we practice IT in the real world I think one of my tasks today at work is to configure a trunk port for my office and our lab because we are gonna be building switches soon to replace our old switches so one of the first things that we do is to just configure a trunk port so that we can configure our switches so I'm gonna show you how to do that and I'll also show you what kind of tickets we get today okay so it's around seven ish right now and the first thing I do of course is to check emails if there's anything that's urgent and of course tickets and I've seen in our ticketing system we use fresh service by the way that there is a ticket that came in at like 3 in the morning okay so it says SAML 2.0 error when attempting to access certain pages. So this happens when she is in Chrome browser and she will check with others if they have the same issue. So that's the first ticket that came in today very early. So usually if this happens, what we first do is to check in incognito mode to see if if she can log in properly or if it works properly on those websites that she's trying to access because sometimes you know our cache gets broken in our br browsers that we keep using so sometimes we have to clear the cache to just make sure that the web pages are working properly so if it works in incognito it means that there's something wrong with her browser and her cache and also another thing to try is to just check it with other browsers it might be a specific browser issue so there's a lot of ways to resolve this kind of problem Okay, so I have two ports, Ethernet ports in my office. One is configured as an access point and I wanted to configure this as a trunk port so I can build switches in my office. Because sometimes it gets really busy in our IT lab and I wanted to do some stuff in my office so I can multitask. So since I have two ports, I'm going to configure one as a trunk port. But before I will show you how to configure trunk ports, I am going to give you a brief overview or background review on switch ports. Okay, so just a quick refresher because I wanted to review the concepts with you guys first before we move on to configuring the trunk ports. I'm going to be asking a few questions and in your mind just answer if you know the answers. Okay, so in what layer of the OSI model is trunking under? So if you answered layer 2, then you're right. And my next question is, what network devices are used in layer 2 of the OSI model? Okay, so the correct answers are switches and bridges. Okay, so switches are the devices that we use in layer 2. And the ports that we see on the switches are called switch ports. And the switch ports are used to carry layer 2 traffic. And there's two types of switch ports in a switch network. Can you give me the two types of switch ports? Okay, so the correct answer would be access ports and trunk ports. So this is where trunking comes in. So let's talk about the differences between an access port and a trunk port. So an access port is most commonly used in our switch network there are more access ports in a switch than a trunk port so the main difference between access ports and trunk ports is that access ports only carry one VLAN or can only carry one VLAN so an access port is used to connect and devices just like a computer a server an IP phone or an access point or a printer for example that is only using one VLAN that is why most of our switch ports are configured with access ports. I'm going to show you here an example of access ports. So as you can see, there's only one VLAN configured on the port and all the computers are in the same subnet. 
Okay, so now let's move on to trunk ports. The main difference between the trunk port and an access port is that the trunk port is the opposite. It can carry more than one VLAN or a group of VLANs. So trunk ports are used to connect switches with different VLANs configured so those VLANs can talk to another switch. So in real world practice and in the workplace, we use trunk ports to connect different switches to each other to carry different kinds of VLANs and this is more cost effective and more flexible than for example if you have 10 VLANs in your network and if you don't use trunk ports you are gonna have to build 10 switches for each specific VLAN so that those so that all of the machines under that VLAN can communicate to each other. If you use trunk port you can only have like two switches. If you use trunk ports you won't have to build a switch for a specific VLAN because one trunk port can carry multiple VLANs instead of just having one specific switch per VLAN that is very expensive and harder to configure and harder to troubleshoot later on. Okay so in the workplace we don't really configure trunk ports as much because we just configure it when we build a new switch for example but in IT sometimes you would have to configure trunk ports in IT labs for example so you can build more switches or you can test VLANs and such so it is not common to configure trunk ports all the time it is more common to configure access ports and switch VLANs between access ports so I want to show you first the commands that we use to configure access ports. So we just type in the interface of the port and then type in switch port mode access because we want it to be an access port. Okay, so now here's the commands to configure trunk ports. Okay, so first we have to get to the interface of the port and then we type in switch port mode trunk because we want to make it a trunk port. Earlier it was switch port mode access because we wanted an access port. Next is the command for the encapsulation method that we are gonna use. So there are two encapsulation methods, 802, dot one q and isl so in my workplace we use native vlans for trunk ports that's why we are using the dot one q in here for the encapsulation method okay and so for the trunk verification commands you can use show interface trunk and it shows you all of the ports that were configured as trunk ports and all of the status of each trunk interface so as you can see in here now, our interface has 802.1Q encapsulation method and it's now a trunk port with the native VLAN of 1. This is the command that you will use if you want to see all of the trunk ports in your switch. The next command that you can use is show interface port number switch port. And this is showing you the trunk configuration of an individual and specific interface. So it shows you all of the details that you want to see, what encapsulation method, what native VLAN, what VLANs it's allowing, and more. Okay, so now that I have configured trunk port in this second port in here I can now plug in a machine from any VLAN or any subnet without having to keep switching the VLANs for the trunk because it can carry more than one VLAN because before I only have an access point there and whenever I plug in a machine from a different VLAN or a subnet I would have to switch over that VLAN from VLAN 2 to VLAN 5 for example now I don't have to keep doing that whenever I have Whenever I am like testing machines from different VLANs, no matter what VLAN it's coming from, I have allowed all of the VLANs to be carried onto that port. So it is very helpful if you are in IT and you're doing a bunch of you know, testing and building machines from different VLAN, building other network devices also. Okay, so that would be it for today's video. I hope you learned something from today's video. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment it down below. And I hope to see you guys in my next videos. Thank you so much for watching.